We have a guest in the studio. For the next one hour, we're going to talk about property ownership in the country and property management. And uh, our guest is already seated. He's comfortable. But before we welcome him, CT has the day's proverb. Yes. Mm. If a child pretends to be dead, the best thing to do is to pretend to bury him. If a child pretends to be dead, the best thing to do is pretend to bury him. Mm. This is from Chad. Yes, this is our, our final proverb from Chad. Okay. Yes, for this season. Okay. We'll visit Chad again in the not too distant future. Okay. Yes. Now that you're talking about burying, here you bury someone in a piece of land. Mm. Okay. Andrew Mude is the CEO and founder of AMG Realtors Limited. Andrew, good morning. Good morning, Eric. How are you? Very well, thanks. Welcome to Kenya's biggest conversation and the hot seat. Asante sana. Happy to be here. When you hear this proverb from Chad, yes. when a child pretends to be dead, the best thing to do is to pretend to bury them. What do you make of it? First, I thought about my four kids. Mm. And I thought, which one would pretend to be dead? <laughs> <laughs> which, one is, which, one is, which one is given to drama? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one is my second one, I think. Mm. Yeah, and um, I think we'd have a good laugh when we try to, to make sure that uh, we prepare the, 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 the mock barrio. <laughs> but what do you think the people of Chad were saying when they came up with this as a proverb? Um, I think bringing up kids is about um, uh, lessons uh, for them. And I think uh, they were trying to say, you know, this is another lesson. Mm. Uh, so if they pretend to be dead, uh, you play along. Mm. Play along and let's see who wins. Because yeah. I think out of, out of that, uh, a lesson will come out. Mm. Yep. Okay. I hope so. What do you think, Eric? <laughs> Sam? Uh, like I've been saying, it's it's I'm I'm equating it to the Swahili one. Mtoto akililia wembe mpe. Correct. And and it's basically this is what they want. Let them learn by the kind of thing that they are pushing for. Throw a tantrum, okay. All right, you will learn better. Yes. So let's talk about AMG Realtors. This is an organization, a company that's now ten years old. But what is it that uh, you do? Okay, so um, thank you very much. Um, at AMG Realtors, we buy, buy, and it's very important, uh, that word, mm -hmm. and then sell land, okay, uh, majorly. So we buy first, we make sure that we own the land, we transfer the title into our name, we then subdivide uh, in most cases, because we buy big, big trucks of land, so subdivide the land, uh, put on what we call on-ground services, that's uh, roads, uh, sewer, fencing, uh, street lights, uh, depending on where the land is and what price point we want to sell it at. And then once we do that, uh, we then uh, market and sell that land. How did you begin this journey? Uh, it's a very interesting journey. You, uh, so first by way of introduction, uh, Andrew Mothe Gitao, and his important uh, because those are my initials, AMG, mm. which is uh, the company name. And uh, I'll tell you the story behind that. But anyway, I used to be in corporate uh, for 13 years. And um, what happened is that uh, in 2006, um, I did my wedding, or we did our wedding. And um, the little money that we got from that wedding, we decided to buy land. Uh, what do you mean the little money? Little that you got money from, from your wedding, you bought land. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, you you know, you, you people spend money in weddings. You got money in your wedding. Uh, yes, you, because um, okay, it's an interesting story. We were leaving to go to. We were leaving the country. We were going to. Work, I was going to work in New York, so we asked that people give us uh, what we call envelope All instead right. of. Uh, a physical presence so so, so what yes mm. correct so what the little money that we got mm. we decided why don't we buy a piece of land um to to kind of remember this and uh, you know as our first joint property anyway so we then went to a land buying company that was owned by a friend of mine yeah, we put down the money and we left for new york uh, that was 2006 to date we have never received a title uh, to that land, if there is land, we have never seen the land, uh, you know, and that was that. But have you seen the friend? 
the friend yes okay uh, is he still alive uh, he is and he's, he's still my friend by the okay. way okay okay uh, but anyway <laughs> so when i was in new york uh, i started thinking now i have some i have some little allowance here some little savings uh, i want to buy land but who can i trust who can i send that money to and why is it that you buy land and you never receive a title for 10 years for 5 years for 6 years so that used to bother me a lot because uh, usually i think that uh, people look for money to do things so the, the hardest the usually the hardest thing to find is money hmm. but once you have the money for example if you are looking for a kind you have money there are more than 100 showrooms in hmm. kenya where you can buy a car hmm. why is it so difficult when it comes to land why is it that you have the money but you cannot buy the, the 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 land or you you're not sure who to trust so i started wondering why is it so difficult to get a title in kenya so i started dreaming that one day i'll own a company where i'll be giving people titles uh you know as fast as possible mm. um and it was just a dream you know those things you did dream as you're working in the office when your boss is harsh you just you just think one day i'm going to leave you guys <laughs> and start my own I'll thing do my thing <laughs> <laughs> don't we all <laughs> anyway so fast forward um 20 2011 i finally left corporate um and i went into car business i'd even forgotten about this dream about uh, buying and selling property um didn't do too well and then one day a friend of mine asked me to go and see some land in anyuki went to the place fell in love with the place uh, bought an acre and then i asked him um you know i said i would like to bring my friends here so that we can own land together and create like a gated community guess what he offered me a commission for mm. anyone that i bring oh pretty exciting <laughs> so i sent out an email to everybody that i knew um and i happened to sell 25 acres out of those emails so it hit me what this it's, it's so easy to sell land i just need to send emails mm. <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh <clears throat> so he gave me some little commission and i told him look i want to get into this business because you know um i'm not working the car business is not going too well so i was just looking to do something new so he says yeah yeah i'll introduce you to somebody selling um got some 10 acres and just started selling and then the dream came back to me mm. aha you remember you had this dream uh, a few years ago so as i said saying what is it that i'm going to do to make sure that i keep this dream alive and that i dish out titles uh, like they are sweets mm. that's, 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 that used to be my 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 thinking so as i said thinking what are the things i need to set in place to make sure that this company uh works the way it's supposed to do mm. so the first thing that i did is to name the company uh um you know using my own initials i said i want to put my name on the line so your name is your bond yes my name is my bond exactly mm. ah that's a, I'll, i'll use that one next time mm -hmm. <laughs> my name is my bond so and you'll pay a commission uh, uh, no course. problem <laughs> 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 so so i sa i said you know i used to work for colgate palmolive which are names of partners mm. colgate was a guy and uh, i said i'll put my name on the line number one, number two, i said i'll only sell my land i'll only buy and sell i won't do brokering i won't do joint ventures i won't i won't i won't be an agent for anyone and it's not arrogance it's just saying i want to invest my money first before i ask somebody to invest their money mm. on the same piece of land because if i invest my money it means then i have to do proper due diligence mm. if i'm invited by somebody to just sell their land i'll be so excited to have that opportunity i might not even do due diligence mm. and that has happened a lot you you find somebody selling land it's owned by somebody else the land has a court case the land is not even owned by the person inviting you to do a joint venture with them mm. so i said i'll only sell land that i own i'll only buy and then sell and i knew that if you do that that takes time because it's a patience game because you can only sell uh, what you can afford to buy mm. and you know i didn't have a pot of money i had very little money by the way uh, 
I started my business with one spoonful of soil, so to speak. <laughs> <But> anyway, uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> the micro addicts are just you know, they're great. Anyway, so um, yeah, so as it were, um, bought the first ten acres, subdivided, sold, then bought another ten, like that, like that. So the ten years have been a journey of patience, hmm. a journey of reinvesting every every single coin back into the business. Uh, a journey of knowing that, you know, it's not about posturing and saying we're the biggest, we have land in every uh, little town that you can think of and all these things, but just about delivery. Sure. The other thing that we did uh, uh, is uh, to say that we will not, um, when we advertise a price, we will only, that will be all inclusive. So if, you, if we say land is going for 350000 for example, we will then not tell you, oh, okay, now you've paid the 350, thank you very much. Please add 20,000 20, for the lawyer. Please add another 50,000 for the surveyor. And then something that you thought would cost 350 and would cost it. end up costing 420,000. Mm. So integrity, really. Sure. Yeah. Andrew, let me ask you, what are some of the challenges um, that you think or that you see clearly, having mm. been in the business for some 10 years now, mm. that uh, Kenyans were experiencing that you have then been able to answer in your business very good i think the first one is the issuing of titles mm -hmm. so we are the only company i believe um, that actually guarantees a title within 60 days and it's written down in the sales agreement we both sign on it and and we actually beat that deadline why so, 60 why not 19 why not 120 days uh well very very good question because uh what happens is that in the in the in the in the transfer of land there's what you call the the board the land control board which is a meeting that takes uh, place uh, at the end of every month in most in most counties mm. so for you to be able to transfer you have to wait for that board meeting to happen so for example if you buy land on the first or second of the month the board meeting will usually happen on the 26th, 25th, around there, uh, in most counties. Or it will happen on the 1st or 3rd of the, the, the following the, month. The, the following month. Mm. So we give ourselves that 30 days to be able to wait for that board meeting, depending on the day that you buy the property. Mm. And then we give ourselves another 30 to be able to process that title. And we actually beat that deadline. So if you buy on the 24th and 26th is a meeting, there's no reason why I should not be able to give you your title by the second or third of the following month. Mm. Uh, but it's just, we want to give you at the shortest time possible. If we didn't have land board control, mm. uh, we could do it in 30 days. Why do we have land board control? Uh, this was put up by um, the government uh, because what used to happen is that uh, men would mm. sell... <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> Men, <laughs> family property, yes, family land, and fa and 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 your house mm -hmm. where you live, and um, because they have gotten uh, <coughs> someone younger, and uh, yeah, all those things, <laughs> and uh, one day <laughs> you wake up and uh, you, d you you don't have a family home anymore. So the land board control is a meeting uh, that takes place with uh, a committee. Uh, chaired by the, the commissioner, assistant uh, commissioner or deputy commissioner uh, and he's supposed to ensure that uh, the man selling the land comes with his wife and his kids and they all agree, yes, we, we have agreed to sell our, our land yep. to so and so and, and, and so that's the reason why that uh, land board happens. It's mm. a check and balance. Exactly. So if I understand you mm -hmm. correctly. You have gone and bought, let's say, a 10-acre piece of land. Yes. You subdivided it into half acres. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. So there you're going to get 20 half acres. But because of the infrastructure that you're going to put in between, so of course it's not going to be 20. 20, yeah. Let's say 19. Yeah. So these are 19 parcels of land that you've subdivided. Yeah. And you're looking for buyers. Yes. Now, Eric comes and is buyer number one. You will start processing Eric's title immediately within 60 days so every time a buyer comes you have to go back to the land board yes correct um so a couple of things happen mm. 
you could um, get a land board where as soon as you buy the land, you then apply for land board consent to subdivide okay. and to further sell. Okay, but for every sale, uh, you need a land board as well. Mm -hmm. And we do all that. So when you buy land from us, we don't ask you, you know, that uh, and now you have to come and do this. So we do all the work for you. Mm. So we apply for the land board for, for the half acre that you've bought. And we, we process it at the land board uh, uh, meeting. And we then do the transfer for you. So Sounds we do that for every single customer. Sounds straightforward. Yes. So why is it that not all land companies are able to do this? Uh, to guarantee within 60 days, within 30 days? There are a couple of reasons. Number one is that they sell land that they don't own. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if uh, Eric is selling 20 acres, I'll, 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 I'll approach him. I'll ask him, you know, sell me this land. He'll say, okay, 20 million shillings. I'll give him a deposit of 2 million and then I'll ask him to allow me to subdivide the land and sell uh, as I pay him All right. the balance. So that land still belongs to who? To Eric. To Eric. Mm. So then if I sell it to to to, to Munda, Munda. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a good example. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I cannot transfer that land to Muga because it still does not belong to me. To you. Yes, yeah. it still belongs to Eric. So until the day I finish paying Eric, then Eric transfers the land to me. Then only then can I then sell it to Muga. Mm. So that is one of the biggest problems in the industry. Mm. That people are selling land that they don't own. Okay. So people so are intermediaries. Exactly. So one of the, th the ways you protect yourself is when you go to buy land, ask to see the title. Okay. And if the company is called XYZ, why is the title then uh, written John Kamau? Who is John Kamau? Mm -hmm. And yet your, the sales agreement says X, Y, Z. The payment is to X, Y, Z. Why then is a title owned by John Kamau? Mm. And they need to have a very good explanation. And you see, you need to see the documentation. See the documentation between John Kamau and X, Y, Z. Have they allow, has John Kamau allowed that if you buy that land, then you can get a, a straight transfer from him? Usually, they will not allow because... Mm. They need all their money before they, they can transfer, transfer the land. piece of the land to mm. you. So those that's one of the biggest challenge. Now, again, naturally, human beings, once I buy the land from Eric and I have a balance of 18 million and I sell to Muga and he pays me 2 million for his half or 4 million for his half, my natural tendency is to go and look for another Eric who is mm. selling another 20 acres. And use that money. And use that money. As a down put payment. another down payment. So I never pay Eric. So Eric waits for 10 years before he can be paid. Mm. And meanwhile, I'm, 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 I'm put another 2 million somewhere else. I'm, I'm mm. selling that land. I've put another 2 million in another place. And then one day I wake up and I owe people 500 million. Guess what? I close the company very quickly. And take off. And take off. Mm. This is the biggest issue we have. And we've seen very many companies go down after five years of uh, huge advertising. Mm. And, and all these things, yeah. Sure, of course, we're dealing with a, a highly emotive issue, and that is land in this country. I mean, it's Correct. hold on to uh, generations in terms of, you know, your, what you have, right? So now, one of the things that you did say was, uh, if I'm coming to buy land from you, I need to ask for the title. The process of authentication, mm -hmm. because we know mm -hmm. that there are fake titles hanging around this country in droves. How then can you be sure that the title then that you as AMG are showing folks is authentic? Very, very good question. Last week, um, I had a guy come sell me land and the title was in his name and he showed me his ID. And I took the ID. So I look at the ID and I look at the guy and there's no resemblance. <laughs> <laughs> so he has... Somebody's, Not even a younger version of himself. No. In fact, <laughs> you know, it was just comical. Okay. <laughs> so I looked at the ID and I looked at him and I looked at the ID again and I looked at him and he says, uh, let me get you the other documents They're in the car. <laughs> and the guy left, switched off his phone. Never came back. Never came back. I still have that ID <laughs> in my office. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, this is a challenge, mm. uh, fraud. Because land involves a lot of money, then naturally it's going to, attract uh, all kinds of fraud. Yeah. So I think as a buyer 
one of the best things you can do is get yourself a very good lawyer. Mm. Uh, lawyers are able to, to look at documents. They're able to do due diligence that you probably are not able to mm -hmm. do. So, for example, you can do a search on an ID. A lot of people don't know that. Mm. You can do a search on a company. A lot of people don't know how to do that. But if you get a good lawyer, you'll be able to do that. A lawyer, a good lawyer is able to look at an original a title and say whether it's fake or not. Okay? Uh, a lawyer can ask for something called a copy of a green card, mm -hmm. which is a further search on the history of that land. So if you go to the land's office, in their file they have what we call a green card. And the green card has a history from the day that land belonged to the government of Kenya. Remember, all land starts from government of Kenya mm -hmm. and then moves to an individual and a company. It will give you the history mm -hmm. and the cases. So if there was ever, a, what do they call it, a charge on that title, mm -hmm. it will show if there was ever a, a case on that title or a, a caveat on that title, it will show on the green card. So get yourself a good lawyer. Other things that you can do that are very interesting, Google. Hmm. Google mm -hmm. is your friend. Google the name of the company. See whether they have any cases. Google the title. You know, so if it's written Nanyuki Marura Block 5 Stroke 753, just put it on a, on a, on Google and just search. You'll be surprised the kind of things that you find. You love a story <laughs> or Yes. Case. So <laughs> one, one day I was sitting with a friend of mine and he says, I bought this land and I'm not able to transfer it. I don't know what's going on. And this guy, the, 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 the guy who sold it to me, is always giving me stories. So I said, okay, show me the title. So he shows me the title. I, I just Google it. And there was a case on it. And it was in the uh, law.org mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. website. Mm -hmm. And so I showed the guy. The guy almost dropped off his seat. He <laughs> says, I have never thought about doing such a thing. Go on social media. Look at that company. Mm. What are the kind of complaints they have? Mm. Go on social media when you wake up at 3 a.m. And you, and, you, and you can't sleep because you're thinking about buying this land. Because uh, also companies have, uh, have guys who are dedicated to deleting mm. all the, the bad <laughs> comments. Mm. So if you, if you happen to wake up at 2 a.m., <laughs> that's the best time to Before search. Before your social media guy <laughs> has wake up. <laughs> <laughs> before the guy reports so there are a couple of things that you can do but getting a good lawyer is always very important yeah let's take a break andrew mudea Gitao, amg is the ceo and founder of amg realtors a company that has been in operation for the last 10 years buying and he says it's very important that you start from that point buying subdividing and reselling land in the country not all cases where you subdivide is it not all cases okay most cases. buying and selling land not buying and developing and then selling houses. No, no houses. No. Just land. Just land. Buy land, sell land. Yes. Ten years in operation. How many acres have you sold so far? Never counted. Or oh, the ten years. A little. Under, under a ten years. No, 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 no. Started, started his company with a spoonful of soil. <laughs> <Not> soil. <laughs> he, he told you, spoonful. How many acres? Many spoonfuls. And, and grand ambitions. Yes. And a clean heart. Yes. And here he is today. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Situation Room. The only way to start your day. Andrew Mudegitao, AMG, the CEO and founder of AMG Realtors. Follow them on Twitter at AMG Realtors. And if you've got any question, you can ask them and they'll respond immediately. I even give you numbers to call their offices. It's all about uh, purchasing property and owning property and the reasons why people buy property. Hmm. Touching tamak. You know, <laughs> Maguta Maguta is a school nearby. Mm -hmm. Near Transformer. Near Transformer. Mm -hmm. Your neighbors include this general so and so on this side, and this other side is uh, former Mo 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 so and so is on this side, mm -hmm. and you're overlooking the mountain. Yes. Yeah, mm. Mm -hmm. all those Lord. things. Mm -hmm. Uninterrupted views. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uninterrupted views of Mount Kenya and a river and near, other things and a river nearby. Of yes. course, yes. Well, the, the exact distance is mm. just nearby. Mm -hmm. When you get there, you'll find out how near, <laughs> it, is. How near it is and what it's near to. <laughs> <laughs> it may not be your farm, but it's near somewhere. <laughs> Fully so serviced. Andrew, Fully serviced. Mm. In as much as land is emotive, it's also aspirational for a lot of people. It is, and um, the the. the the desire to own a little piece, a square pocket of something is, is, is big in the hearts of many. However, the pocket doesn't always match the desire. All right. right? Yes. Uh, so um, the hope is that you have an all-inclusive kind of offer for Kenyans as well 
who will say, okay, look, I don't have it all right now. Do you then break it down also? The way you break down the acres, the acreage, do you break down the, the, the payment so that people can do something um, regularly towards a wholesome uh, amount? Yes, uh, absolutely, we do. But let me tell you a very interesting thing, uh, a very interesting advice somebody gave me once and really, really helped me. Um, when I was in corporate and, um, you know, uh, I wanted to get a mortgage uh, to buy a house. And so I drove into Runda, um, which was my dream mm -hmm. estate, like very many other Kenyans. Mm. And obviously, um, the, the pocket and the dream were not matching. Mm -hmm. And so I, I told my boss, but I'd gone to him to complain that uh, what they are paying me will never allow me to, to live, live in Runda. In I mean, Runda. surely. Yes, yes, surely. How can they do that to me? Mm -hmm. And he gave me very good advice. He says, when you look at mortgages or buying property, buy what you can afford, not where you want to live. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, but I don't want to live in Embakasi or mm -hmm. Lolongo, which is, which is where I can, can afford. afford. Yeah. He, say, he says, you don't have to live there, but just own the house. He says, okay, uh, why? He says, if you look at life, um, the people who do something then end up achieving the dream. The people who wait for their income to grow so that they can achieve the dream. They can start. Yes. Mm. As your income is growing, guess what? The land price and the property price is also growing. Yeah. So your dream and the and your income will never match. So I think the most important thing is not to look at, I want to live in Juja, uh, which is a property, for example, that we are selling now. Mm. It's 3.2 million. I only have a million. What am I going to do? So if you, if you think that way, uh, you say, okay, let me save up the, the balance two million and then I can I can buy Juja. By the time you save up the two million, guess what? Mm. The land is no longer three million, it's five million. And you get frustrated. So you're always two million short of buying Juja. Mm. What you do is come and ask me, what can I buy with the one million that I have today? Mm. And I'll tell you, buy two two plots in Nakuru mm. at 500, 500,000. Mm. In two years or three years, probably that land will be at that 1.6, 1.7 mm. per plot. So if you sell that, you'll have, you know, three, four million. And your dream of getting to Juja will be nearer because you then use that money mm. to help you to make more money. So the most important thing is to, is to start somewhere is to take some action mm. and once you take action that property in itself mm. will appreciate now obviously you need to ask the hard questions so if i take you to nakuru you must ask me why will this property appreciate right mm. and, and you if, can give that yes, advice as exactly, to why yes okay, okay. if i'm not able to answer that question don't buy mm. and i must convince you so telling you the sgr passes here what yeah. is a train passing there's a bypass to do, and they're going yes to do. but if i tell you the expressway is being built here mm. the budget is already allocated and it's going to happen soon then maybe that might make sense to you mm. if i tell you there's a major you know government project it's already budgeted contractors are coming on site in the next six months you can check that on kenha website for example and you see that then you probably you can see why that place which actually brings us to how do you identify mm -hmm. the land, the pieces yeah. of land that you as AMG buy? Yes, that, that is a very good question. We spend more time, I personally spend more time buying than selling. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I'm putting my money down. So if I buy the wrong thing, then guess what? You get, my you money is tied. Yeah, it's, 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 it's dead stock, correct. Mm -hmm. So I have to look very carefully where I'm buying. And that's, that's one of the advantages of buying for, from us because we have already put the money down, you can be assured that we have done enough research. So mm. we look for big projects. Mm. So I can give you an example, Malindi, which is at 150,000 uh, for a 50 by 100, is right opposite. And when I say right opposite, I mean you cross the road, mm. uh, a 30 meter road, and you, 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 you touch the fence of what is the biggest solar project now in, in probably in Kenya. It's called the Malindi Solar Project. Yeah, mm. Already constructed, already 
commissioned, mm. already uh, operational. So that project is going to employ, what, 500 people, 1,000 people. Mm. Those people must then live somewhere. They must shop somewhere. They must go to hospital somewhere. They must go to school somewhere. Mm. Their kids, basically. Yeah. So they are going to be where? Nearest to the land, yeah. to where they work. Yeah. So we buy opposite that, that place. Because we know then you can that project growth. Exactly. That's where the growth is going to come mm. come from. So that's how we look for land. Now, when we find the land, then it's about the due diligence. So what kind of due diligence do we do? We go to the chief, tell us the history of this land. The chief is supposed to know everything mm. in that locality. So tell us the history. Tell us about this family. Tell us how many kids do they have? Was there another wife mm. who probably passed on and is being disinherited by mm. the younger wife? Uh, how, uh, how how generally do you, do you think about that family? Are they a family of integrity? And the chief knows a lot of these things. Mm. Then we go to the family and we sit down with them and we want to see all of them and we talk to them. And if there's a brother saying, ah, you know, mm, we are still thinking about it, we walk away. Mm. Because we don't, we, we, we don't just believe in buying and selling, we also believe in blessings. We want, when we give you the money, that the whole family is happy, mm. that we dealt with a company that gave us money and this money is helping us in whatever way that we wished uh, for that money to help us. So then we do now the searches, the green cards, the, 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 the government, whatever the government has issued, the survey plan, uh, the GPS coordinates. You know in Kenya you can be sold land and you're told it is here, but the actual <laughs> land is five kilometers away. Mm. That happens a lot. Mm. They show you the flat one next to the tarmac. You're actually uh, on the rocky, rocky side. Rocky, there's, a, yes. there's, there's a cliff mm. uh, and it's actually land that you cannot then uh, <laughs> inhabit. So, mm. so all, those, all those things. And we take a lot of time. We, we say buying land is not an emergency. Mm. We will take our time to look at it to make sure that, uh, that we are buying the right thing. Mm. It doesn't mean we have not lost money. We have. Uh, we have lost money buying. Uh, but we are very, very careful how we go about how it. How did you lose money buying? Uh, well, I don't want to go into very many details, mm. uh, but there was just a, a ring of, uh, you know, where everybody's in the game. Um, so it's almost impossible to crack through. So, you know, so so you, everybody involved in the chain. Essentially, you were played. Yes, yes, correct. You got yeah. played. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. is that what uh, gaps in due diligence? No, 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 no. no. It's just um, uh, what what can I say? It's just um, it's just you know it's just a, a system that is designed uh, purposely to con to swindle to, to, to swindle, and so you get you get into that system, and it's very difficult to to know because so by the time you realize yes. Yes, even officials are involved in it. You know, the I, very people who are the, supposed to provide exactly. you with the truth you are seeking yes. are in on the game. They are in on the game. Yes, it's it's not very common, but it it happens. Mm. How do you make the decision on how to subdivide a piece of land? So there are areas where you'll buy and you'll subdivide into quarters, into mm. acres, mm. into half acres, mm. and areas like the Malindi one you're talking about. Mm which is next to a solar power plant mm. and you're subdividing into 50 by 100. Yes. Why? Because, uh, number one, we do a lot of research. We always ask our customers on their feedback, what is it that you want to see? Which areas do you want us to go into? Where, what are you looking for? So we do that research continuously. We're always doing very short surveys to our customers uh, because 70% of, of our business is actually repeat and referral. Mm. So it's word of mouth. People are happy with our services. They tell others and they keep coming back. So we take care of them. We take care of those who are our customers. And they're the best people to ask mm. because they're the ones buying. Competition will never come to buy from us. That's what I keep telling my, my people. Mm. Uh, but we are very customer-centric. We focus on the customer. So we do surveys. We ask them. What, which areas do you want us to go into? What areas would you want? And like now people are telling us we want to be next to the beach. I live in America. When I come back to Kenya, I don't want to live in Nairobi. Mm. Uh, now with remote working, I don't have to live in Nairobi. I want to live in Diani. I don't want a beach house, but I want to be 500 meters from the beach. Mm. So we are actively looking in those areas. Mm. Number one. Number two, we look at the affordability. Mm. 
So we try to to cater for all customers. So we have land starting from 150,000. Imagine that. Up to, uh, we have land going for 4.5 million. Mm. Okay? So, and we have all those pieces, you know, 150, 300, 500, 700, 1.2 million. So we are trying to make sure that if you come to AMG, you will definitely find something that you can afford to buy. So that also guides us on how we subdivide. So we know the bigger the chunk, the more expensive it's going to be. Mm. The smaller and the 50 by 100 is, is, is a legal allowed uh, smallest size in Kenya, uh, then more people can afford. And also, uh, as you said, land is very emotive. So a lot of Kenyans, uh, and this we have seen uh, in our 10 years of selling land, a lot of Kenyans like many small pieces mm -hmm. rather than one big piece. Right. Yeah. Uh, so if you are a chama, you are 10 people, you want to buy 10 eights rather than buy one acre and then go into the uh, business of subdividing and all that. If you have four kids, you'd rather buy four eights or five of them, uh, give each one uh, eighth and have one as a parent and be a neighbor there. Mm -hmm. So that's how Kenyans think about buying land. So yeah. they think in in chunks that I can distribute this wealth very easily to my kids. If it is inheritance land, it's very easy then to, to, to for, for that succession to happen and for that land to be dished out to an individual mm. rather than have joint ownership. Do you open your doors to non-Kenyans? So can non-Kenyans also participate uh, in this and also then have a piece of Kenya as it were? Yes, 100%. You can own land in Kenya as a non-Kenyan but you can only own leasehold land, not freehold. And okay. free freehold, okay. yes, there's a difference. Explain. Just go ahead and explain, please. Yes. That's what I was going to ask. Freehold. Yes. Uh, lease. Leasehold. leasehold. Yes. Is there another hold? Yeah. <laughs> no, there's no other hold. <laughs> but, 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 but simply put is leasehold, the government is leasing you land. Okay, for 99 years, so mm -hmm. it will say, I'm leasing you this land for 99 years. Mm -hmm. And it's very important when you're buying land, don't because there's a start date for that lease. Mm. So don't buy land that is leasehold for 99 years, and the eight starting years. from 1900, mm. <laughs> <laughs> because that <laughs> lease has already expired. Oh, mm. voila. Uh, yeah, okay, uh -huh. You get, mm -hmm. because that lease then would have expired in 1999. Mm. Sure. Um, so you always want to see how many years before automatically right. the renewal should go to the owner. Mm. But there's an application process for renewal mm. which a lot of people forget a lot of people ignore and you and find it, some the government can come back for their land thereafter it, not only the government mm. someone else there can are apply. some people who are very clever mm. they they all they keep looking oh e meisha okay let me apply for it mm. because the real owner is not applying for the for the renewal so it's very important mm. then the freehold is that you own the land outright uh, so and freehold is usually for agricultural purposes. Mm. So a lot of agricultural land is on freehold in Kenya. You still find agricultural land on leasehold. And previously the government used to do triple nine years, nine 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 years. Mm. So almost a, a thousand. A millennium, years. in other words. Uh, yes, a millennium. And uh, but now they stopped that. The law was changed. So I think the highest the the the, the highest number of years is ninety nine now. Um, they, you could also convert, used to be able to convert lease into freehold, mm -hmm. but that is no longer possible. Um, so y in Kenya, a foreigner can own leasehold land. They cannot own freehold. Free Let me ask, there's yes. this term that I've heard used often, crown land. What sort of land is this? Uh, I do not know the full details, but I would think it's previously colonial. Mm. colonial title mm. previously but but i i need to check on that but, but majorly in kenya it, it should be freehold and and, and leasehold, and, and leasehold. Uh, that's that's majorly what what we deal deal in mm. yeah maybe maybe one of the viewers could help us could let that. us know yes there are many cases where um there's community land ownership as well correct yes and communities are allowed by law mm. to own land mm being held in trust yes. for them yeah. and then at some point communities decide to subdivide the pieces of land and then they start you know members of the community start selling off mm. you know schemes mm. or whatever mm. have you found yourself involved in purchasing a scheme 
from part of community land which has now been subdivided and then transferred to your buyers? Uh, usually we shy away from that kind of land. Why? Um, because historically there was a reason why that land was owned by the community. Mm -hmm. We, we tend to concentrate more on um, cosmopolitan, uh, uh, you know, areas mm -hmm. where anybody feels free to settle. And so, for example, if you go to some areas, you find a lot of grazing land was owned by the community. Now, if you then go and start buying th those pieces of land and start dividing into aids and people settling there, what you're saying is that the grazing land is now shrinking. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously the community, uh, whether you have gone in through the gatekeepers or dire directly into somebody who then owns some of that land, mm. the community will react. Mm. And that reaction um, could then affect your customers. So we tend to share away from what was previously community land. Um, but probably if, you know, a number of years, maybe 50 years, uh, the history is long enough that mm. people now have settled and, and, the, and community no is used to and the, the, com the community is used to this, mm. uh, then probably we could go in. But, you know, we always say there's so much land on sale. Uh, you don't really have to, to, to move into those kind of areas. There are people who, who advertise their pieces of land as they are selling and they say this is serviced land. Yes. So we've come in, we've put in a gate, we've put in roads inside, we've done, I don't know, the drainage system and, and a tumevuta steamer. What does that mean and why is it important? We are part of those people who mm. do that. Uh, we sell serviced and non-serviced land. Mm. And again, it goes back to the price point. Um, if I'm looking to save money, and buying land is one of the best ways to save money. Uh, if you look at... Uh, Shares, for example, you could buy shares today at a hundred shillings, mm. and in five years that share is at three shillings. <laughs> it's hardly, it's impossible with land. If mm. you buy land for a hundred thousand today, in five years for sure, at the very minimum, that land will be at a hundred thousand. Mm. So you you will never lose money on land. You will always gain. Obviously, you have to do your due diligence and make sure you're buying genuine land. Anyway, um, the, the quest to answer your question, uh, if you're buying to buy, if you're looking to buy land as a saving, you can buy land anywhere mm. as long as you see that in the near future that land is gonna appreciate. appreciate. Now, depending on your pocket, then you might want to buy unserviced land. So, land that has just been subdivided, maybe some roads have been done, and that's it. Now, you could also be looking to buy land to build your home. So, for example, what we sell in Juja. So, what we've done in Juja, we've put a fence, a stone wall fence, around the whole um, uh, a piece of land. Mm. Um, we've done street lighting, uh, which are solar. We've done the roads uh, to Maram standards. We've done a huge, fantastic gate. We have a kids' play area. We have a borehole on top of uh, the normal uh, council water. Uh, we've pulled in the electricity. And what you are saying is, this is ready. It's like buying a car. Hmm. So you can imagine buying a car with no wheels, no doors, and then you have to put all those things yourself. Hmm. Or buying a car, even with insurance, and you just get in and drive. So that is ready, buy and build. That's what we call it, buy and build. And you want to buy that when you're looking for land that you want to settle in. Also, even if you are um, uh, looking to speculate or to, to, to land bank, uh, th those kind of pieces also tend to appreciate much faster. Mm. So depending on your budget, uh, then this is also a very good place to buy mm. because in a few months you start seeing people building and, and as people are building their homes, mm. the price of land is, is, is appreciating. Yeah. Yeah. So you told us about the Juja yes. and uh, Malindi yes. and Nakuru you've mentioned. Nakuru, yes. How many other areas are you... We have a total of 21 areas mm. in Kenya, uh, different places, different sizes. So in Nanyuki, we have from eight to acres uh, to five acres. Mm -hmm. So you can buy, you know, uh, land to put up a hospital, to put up a school uh, from us. Mm -hmm. And um, so we try to cater for each and everyone. 
who is looking to buy land for whatever reason they are looking to 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 buy mm. we have other areas um riru we have uh, naivasha we have longonot we have a very interesting area in naivasha uh, called the dry pot mm. this mm. is where the um, the famous uh, sgr is terminating mm. and we are next there i think it's one of the best places that you can buy Uh, given that it's more central naivasha is more central than nairobi mm. uh, so to speak in terms of location wise mm. if you put up a factory in naivasha you can uh, you can easily uh, uh, distribute into rift western nyanza area mm. it's because of the sgr it's very easy then to bring product into nairobi mm. and into mombasa uh, than somebody probably mm. seated in nairobi or mm. who has a factory in nairobi Mm. Yeah, and many other areas. All right, some of the areas. So we've said this morning that people can get in touch with uh, AMG Realtors on social media. That's at AMG Realtors. Where are your offices? If somebody would like to come in and know, as they are doing their due diligence. You're very good. <laughs> very, very good question. <laughs> We are situated on Thika Road, the super highway. We are on exit seven. We are next to Roasters or opposite Garden City Mall. We have our own building it's called the AMG Center and again the reason we've done that is to show that we are here to stay we are not a fly by night uh, company you know those companies you buy land today you go there after a month you are, you are, you are looking for the office <laughs> you you think you're missing the, the the floor so you go up they are not there you go down they are not there you go to the parking yeah. ask a watchman uh, yes you CGI. ask the watchman sijai yeah. kuskia your company mm. you think you're in the wrong building you go to the next one so again to to just give comfort to our customers mm. and potential customers we put up this building it's called the AMG center just like our name and we are there to show that uh, we are not moving anywhere it's a uh, four 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 floors so we occupied third floor and second floor uh, no four, fourth and uh, third floor and uh, you come in we have 60 employees uh, you'll be very well attended mm. okay. we have uh, in-house lawyers an in-house surveyor we have a sales team we have a finance team and we we always tend to think about the customer how right. can we make it easier for the customer mm. we give a free uh, transport for viewing of land uh, anywhere in the country we have vans to take you we'll buy you lunch mm. uh, we we'll bring you back and um, you know you can you can go to our website www.amgrealtors.com and get more information you can also text us on 40299 and we'll be able to call you back and give you as much information as you'd require. Andrew, thank you very much for joining us.